The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and Smithsonian's Center for Education and Museum Studies. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Sandra C. Atkinson has an MA in Dance from American University. Sandra is currently teaching at Montgomery College, Rockville, Maryland, and American University in Washington, D.C. Sandra is a company member of Next Reflex Dance Collective and has also worked with Peter DeMuro, Jane Franklin Dance, Carla and Company at Dance Place, and Liz Lerman Dance Exchange. She has created works on the Dancers of Equinox Dance Theater, Next Reflex Dance Collective, and Montgomery College as well as her own exploration of choreography, which has been performed at various venues on the East Coast. Sandra is proud to be a 2012 Smithsonian Fellow, Dance Metro DC Selection Panelist for the 2012 Awards, and Advisory Board Member for the Revision Dance Collaborative. What I decided to do with this wonderful theme, American Identity, is um, apply it to my Jazz 3 class. So what we did, because jazz dance is indigenous to the United States, we kind of looked at the lineage of jazz history because there's always a direct connection to society through jazz dance. Um, but I also had the students look at their own identity and how they will become artists themselves. So we went through a couple of different exercises in order to do that. Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about the course description itself. Um, so the course itself, we focus definitely on technique. It is a technique movement class. So I don't, we don't get to sit down and write and you know, do lecture courses often. But what we do is we focus on all of the different elements of jazz dance. There's a lot of different styles of jazz dance in itself, from vernacular jazz to fusion jazz, which is what it is today. And if you kind of look at all of that, you can kind of place it in history on where um, we, oh, thank you. <laughs> where we are in history through jazz dance. So we look at technique, of course, style, and history. Um, we also focus a lot on picking up combinations. We go across the floor. We think about musicality, especially when we're focusing on jazz music with jazz dance. And then we also look at choreographical elements in jazz styles. So, of course, there's exercise because we're moving, we're movers, the non-formal, you know, way of communicating. So that's just kind of what this class starts with. Now, this is a combination class. So I also have my Jazz 2 students within this class. So that was a nice challenge, was being able to work with my Jazz 2 students and get them to explore different American choreographers and their contributions to jazz dance but then looking, having them kind of see what Jazz 3 is doing, where they're getting to not only do that, but explore themselves and where they fit into jazz dance. So there is a video that we made because dance is a nonverbal form of communication, so it was important for me to be able to show you what these students were able to come up with. So the first student you're going to see is Billy, and Billy came up with a couple of words, but one of the words that was um, important and imperative to him that he emphasized was sassy and fun and it's kind of a way for him to cope through life because he's been through a lot of um, challenges in the last year so this was a way that he was able to cope through his life and his solo definitely replicates that fun and sassy manner it's very upbeat it uses um, big band music from the 1940s and it's fast and fluid the next student is um, Dejana, and Dejana Cobbs is a long, beautiful dancer. She's about five foot eleven, and one of the things that she's always uncomfortable with is totally extending her limbs. So for her, one of the most important words for her was graceful because she doesn't view herself as a graceful dancer. She kind of views herself as somebody kind of clunky and uncoordinated and always places herself in the back. So exploring that word for her, among the other words that she mentions in the video, really allowed her to explore her own movement and come out of her shell. The last student on the video is Gabby, and Gabby for the first time explored jazz music. Now she explored jazz music, uh, the jazz music of Dave Brubeck, 
which she really took a liking to. And she has also come into her own in the last two years. I've had her for two years. And she's exploring movement that is fluid and in some words sensual. So here is the video that the students and I have put together as a visualization for this project part one. So there's three students representing this one project. There were six students in the class. So Billy's words were sassy, perfect, of course, which got a nice laugh in our jazz class. <laughs> um, also, just the fact that he has a lot of fear. He started doing theater and dance in order to get over shyness. So I've actually had this student for three semesters, and he's not a dancer at all, has never taken dance before Montgomery College, but he really jumped into the dance technique class. So he is presenting his words on a poster. I allowed them to do free form, so it wasn't an essay itself. So this is his movement, and he used 1940s big band music. And you'll see a lot of his theatrical elements in there, as well as his sassiness, as he loved to put in there. So now we move on to Dejana, and Dejana is a very tall, lanky dancer, and she puts herself in the back of the class a lot because she feels like she towers over everyone. So one of her words she liked to actually put two words together was clums graceful because she feels like she's really clumsy, but she actually moves really nice and beautiful and graceful, and that's something she's been working on. And I've had her for three semesters as well, but has been working on throughout. So she really tried to extend and really come out of her shell, but she loves musical theater, so I allowed her to use a musical theater piece from Hairspray. So now we move on to Gabby, and Gabby I've had for at least two semesters, but in this particular jazz class, I had never had her in jazz, I've only had her in modern, and um, she was really, really moved by Dave Brubeck, she had never heard of Dave Brubeck, which, you know, for most of us is like, what? Um, but this is a very, a, a very um, popular piece of music by Dave Brubeck, but she was really moved by this and really wanted to use this to um, be a part of her six words. So one of the things that has happened with Gabby is she has kind of come out of her shell through the Department of Dance and has really decided to go forth with her dance career in, in a different form than probably what we would like, but <laughs> she's definitely continuing with it. She's working on yoga. So um, one of her words was sensual, and I kind of allowed her to go there because it, for her that was a part of her own identity and who are we to censor that. So, of course, a part of this um, particular project, they also had to think about all of the choreographical elements that come with um, doing their project. So they had to think about spacing, like you would apply to any museum, the way you walk around it, the layout of it. You also have the art and the artistic elements of it. So the same things that you would apply to visual art, you would apply to dance itself. So we did talk about that a lot. So the next thing that we did, because I thought of this project as a progression, we've looked into ourselves, we've decided who we are and what we are and what we're representing. 
But now let's go even deeper. So the written in bones um, exhibit for me really spoke to me and I knew that there was a way to directly connect it to dance through anatomy and through the reconstruction. We spent a lot of time on the facial reconstruction part of the museum. Um, I went with the students. Again, I had three when I went and then the other three went on their own, but I gave them a questionnaire that would um, incorporate elements of dance but also connect it to the actual exhibit. So this, these two comments come from what did you find surprising about your experience at the Smithsonian? Um, and you can read what Diane said and what Gabby said, but um, what I tried to do is walk them through each section and connect each part of the exhibit to dance. So we looked at diet, we looked at um, using different uh, instruments in, for injury, we looked at how looking at our bones and daily habits affect how we move and how we dance. We looked at geographical and demographical areas and what that does to our identity and how we move naturally outside of dance. So that was something that the students found really interesting because unfortunately a lot of students don't connect dance to different areas, but it's one of those things that you can connect to anything. And that's another thing I wanted them to see, not just that we're just dancers, but everything is connected, especially our anatomy. It's really important that we know these elements. So they had a kick out of the, um, there's a little room where you can go through and, and look at the different uh, bones and try to identify what that person was and who they were and all of that. And they loved that part. And they just didn't ever dawn on them that that's something you could do and then you could also put it into dance. So we move on and we take all of our experience from the written in bones exhibit and we have our project part two. So I gave them a kind of a phrase, if my bones could speak, what would they say about my identity? So I really wanted them to think back at that reconstruction. So if I were to find that we're building something and once we see that face, we want to dive into who that person was, where they came from, who, are, who they are and what do they contribute to society. So I had the students write an essay addressing forensic anthropology, connecting it to art and the making of jazz dance. So I wanted them to look at it from a choreographical element as well as a um, forensic anthropological element. We also looked at our individual and cultural identity and our artistic identity because one of the things we are learning in this class is it's really important we know who we are as artists so that we can make an impression. Because a lot of times you don't think about those things and then when you go out to the field and you try to find a job, what makes it important is you knowing who you are and what sets you apart from the other 300 people that can put their leg behind their ear. Okay, so I try to tell that, you know, I try to say that to their dancers because it doesn't dawn on them until they actually get out there and they feel that rejection and they don't understand that them setting themselves apart, having a sense of self, knowing who they are and where they come from makes a huge difference in finding a job. So we also, I had them write about these things, so I wanted them to kind of go back to that exhibit. We did a lot of talking in class about how can we make these connections, but then I took it a step farther. So I also wanted them to think about costuming. What does your costuming say about yourself? How does it stick with your choreography? What does it mean if you're wearing this color shirt and what are you saying about yourself? And then I also had them think about um, their music choice. I really wanted the students to be able to explore whatever style of music they wanted to because by this point we've already gone through to say who we are, where we're coming from. So a lot of the students chose, um, I gave them an ask, but we've, by this point of the semester, we've gone through five different styles of jazz because yes, we're still dancing and learning different combinations and working on our turns and our leaps and cardio and all these other things. So this is all layered on top of what their daily regimen is in class. So we looked at what style of jazz do you identify with the most and what do you feel like speaks to you? And right now in jazz dance, contemporary and fusion jazz are something that's really um, identifying with young people. And if you look at it, you can directly tie it to our society. We are a, a very mixed society. We are a very, we don't look at race as much as we used to, um, which I think is good and bad for young people. Um, <laughs> but for them, that's where, that's where they're at. And contemporary allows them to put a lot of uh, modern technique with their jazz. So with contemporary, they feel like they can really speak their story because contemporary is usually a narrative form of dance. So a lot of them chose those two styles. 
And then I had them journal their choreographical exploration because it's really important as choreographers that we can document what we're doing, why are we doing it, what's inspiring us, what are we seeing. All of those things impact the way we move and the way we make dance. So a lot of them definitely went back to um, some of the parts of the museum, especially the, the aspect of the museum about daily habits and how that impacts how you stand, how you move, how you walk, what you did. So all of those things went into that journal. And then they had to create a three to five minute solo, which is a physical illustration of their essay and a physical illustration of their individuality. Um, so that's basically my project. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm continuing with the project with all of my Jazz 3 students. I feel like it's a really nice uh, connection between the three levels. In the spring we have a Jazz 2, 3, 4 class. So I have three different levels in the class. So again, my Jazz 2 students are looking at American choreographers, musical theater choreographers, jazz dance choreographers that are making a contribution to the field. And then my Jazz 3 students will again go down to the National Portrait Gallery and go to the Written in Bones exhibit. Thank God it's there to 2015. And <laughs> we'll do the same exercise because the Jazz 2 students watched all of this happen and they were like, are we gonna do the same thing? So yes, we are gonna do the same thing and they're actually in the process of presenting their six word portrait memoir this week and going through all the steps again. And then in Jazz 4, we think about how can we articulate ourselves as artists? How do we get our own movement onto other people? How do we become teachers? So that's kind of where we're going right now. Um, but I really wanted the students to speak for themselves because they put so much work into these projects. And it was a lot of work choreographing these things. And I definitely tried to you know, work them through the process, but also give them critical response as well. So, thank you.